When talking about file management as it pertains to Chief Architect, we go through a scenario where we add a new folder to a directory on your computer called Chief Plans, and within that folder we create folders for each project. Each project folder contains the plan, layout, and any additional files that might be relevant to the project. We recommend this strategy, or a similar strategy, because Chief Architect files have links to each other, and keeping all the files in one place means that it is less likely that a file will get moved, renamed, or deleted, and the link broken as a result. We'll call this traditional file management. Traditional file management requires an understanding of your computer's file system and where files are stored, because Chief Architect requires multiple files to link to each other, plans, layouts, material maps, etc. It is important to be very organized, or you risk breaking these connections, especially when accommodating change orders and making duplicates of your project. In X17, we have added Chief Architect Project Management. When project management is turned on, all files associated with a project are bundled together, so links cannot be accidentally broken. For example, plans and layouts are bundled together into a project, so renaming a plan or a layout will not break the link between them. We can make copies and move files within the project without worry that that link will break. We will only be able to link files that are within the same project, so we don't have to worry about linking to a plan erroneously. When you turn on Chief Architect Project Management for the first time, we copy your preferences and user settings into Chief's Manage Store. This includes your custom toolbars, templates, and user catalog. Changes you make to these items after that point are only saved to the Manage Store. The files in the Manage Store are not accessible through File Explorer or Finder. We store the content and metadata in a format that allows Chief to keep track of the associations between files and are meant to be accessed only through Chief. If you turn off project management, we copy the user settings back to their original locations. However, you'll want to export any projects you need outside of project management. We'll discuss exporting later on. Since Chief Architect is managing our files for us, we do not interact with them using File Explorer or Finder. We use the project browser instead. There are quite a few changes in this area, so let's go through them. Inside the plan folders for CAD details, cameras, and cross sections, we can add new subfolders to help organize these views. Inside the project, we can create new folders to organize multiple plans and layout files. When we have an item selected in the project browser, we can see information about the project plan or layout listed on the details panel. This includes information such as created and modified dates, file size, and what folders or tags are being used. When we have a plan or layout open, the project and the open file will show a green overlay icon so you know which file you're working on. Above our list of projects, we have common documents and templates. As you can likely guess, the Plan and Layout Templates folder contains plan and layout templates that Chief Architect provides or that you have created. This gray overlay icon indicates which ones are designated in your preferences. The Common Documents folder is where you can collect and store files that you want to refer back to frequently that are not project-specific. This is also the only area where you can store a plan that links to multiple projects. Be careful, though, if you update a detail from a plan stored in common documents that is referenced in multiple projects, all projects referencing that detail will be updated as well. At the top of the project browser, we have a filter where we can use text queries to find projects. By default, projects will sort alphabetically. To the right of the filter, we have the ability to change to sorting the list by name, date created, date modified, or by size. If we right-click on an individual project, we can choose to pin it to the top of the list, regardless of sorting technique. At the bottom of the project browser, we can toggle between seeing all projects or only the projects we currently have open. We also have the option to show the default documents, which are the common documents and the plan and layout templates. If we click on the cogwheel, we can choose which panels are displayed in the project browser. Let's turn on folders. These folders allow us to refine a workflow or enhance organization. For example, we can create a folder to contain all active projects, or folders for different builders. 
We can right-click on a project to add to it to a folder, or we can click and drag a project into the folder. When we click on a folder, it will filter the project browser to show the contents of that folder. Clicking on the folder name in the Filters area removes the filter, showing all projects again. If we right-click a folder, we can add a project to the folder, create subfolders, rename, change the color, or delete the folder. Deleting the folder will not delete the projects within the folder, just the folder itself. We can create a new project by clicking New Project in the dashboard, or by clicking File New Project. Here we can choose the unit of measurement and type in the name for our project. Notice as we type in the name, it auto-populates the name of the plan and the layout. We can change the names of the plan or the layout, choose which templates are used, or choose whether or not to create either of these files by unchecking the associated boxes. New projects can also be created by right-clicking inside the project browser, or by clicking the Add New Project button at the bottom. We can add a new plan to a project by right-clicking a project and choosing Add New Plan. We can also choose to make a copy of an existing project. This allows us to create a custom project structure with predefined links to be used as a project template. Just keep in mind that this is a copy of everything that is in the project, so project data and time tracker entries that existed in the original will persist in the copy. There are a few ways to bring a file into a project. If we go to File, Open Plan, slash Layout, we can open a file from one of our existing projects. Or we can click Browse to bring in a plan or layout from outside of Chief Architect Project Management. When we import a plan or a layout file directly from the file system, we can choose to import it into either a new project or an existing project, or leave it outside of project management. In most cases, you'll want to choose a new or existing project. When we do so, Chief Architect will copy the file into the Manage Store and not reference the original file at all. You might choose to just open the plan but not import it if you are needing to refer to the plan but is not something that you are actively working on, like examining a colleague's plan from Chief Talk, for example. In this case, when you save, you'll have the option to save it as a project in your Manage Store or to save the changes outside of project management, and it will apply the changes to the original file. If we right-click on a project directly in the Project Browser and select Import Files, it will import the file directly into that project without a prompt. Whether importing an individual file or adding a file to an existing project, Chief Architect will examine the folder where the initial plan or layout file resides and let you know of other plans and layouts that reside in that same folder, in case you want to import them into the project as well. If we import a file with links, like how a layout file links to a plan file once you send a view to it, Chief Architect will trace the links and bring in any files linked to that layout automatically, making it more efficient to start by importing the layout file. We can also import supplemental files within the project as well. These can include things like site plan PDFs or inspiration images. When you do so, these files are copied into the managed store so that they are no longer referencing the original files at all. That way, if the original is moved or changed, or deleted, the copy that Chief Architect is holding will not be affected. If we double-click on a file that we've imported, it will open the file in the default program associated with that file type, and any modifications to that file will only apply to the version of the file stored in the Manage Store. To see how these features are related to practical use, we're going to discuss three common workflows, revision, remodel, and options. A project can go through many iterations during its design phase. Clients change their mind, engineers call for more support, or code requirements might come to light that weren't previously considered. Whatever the cause, sometimes a project needs to pivot. Whatever the reason, it is always a good idea to save a copy of the project as it is before diving into a new approach. To do this, we can right-click on the plan and choose the option Make a copy with links to new folder. If the file hasn't been saved recently, we'll be prompted with an option to save the current file before making the copy. The with links part means that if we have any referenced files, like plan overlays or layouts that we had sent views to, they will be copied too. For example, if we right-click on a plan file that is linked to a layout, we'll be asked if we want to make a copy of the layout. If the scope of the change is significant, it might make sense for us to make a copy of the layout as well, but often that is not necessary. 
Let's name the new folder with a date so that we have an idea of what this copy represents. Anytime we know we are about to make a significant pivot, we can create another copy. If at any point we need to go back to a previous edition, we can save a copy of our current work, then right-click on our main file and choose the option Replace With to overwrite the main plan with the prior edition. There is no undo for this process, so be sure to save a copy of the current edition before overwriting, just in case you need to go back. If there are views on the layout that do not have corresponding links to the plan, we'll still have to go and clean those up, but any cameras or details that are the same between the two plans will link up just fine up to the layout. Similar to revisions, but more purposeful, we are deliberately providing our client with options to choose from. We can start with a base plan that contains all the elements that will be consistent between each edition, perhaps just the structural elements of the existing space. When complete, we can right-click on that base plan and make a copy with links to new folder, like we did for the revision approach mentioned earlier. But this time, name the folder Option 1. Now we can start working on the changes for the Option 1 plan. When we're ready to start the next phase, we can make a copy of the base plan again, or make a copy of the Option 1 plan, whichever would be more efficient for creating the Option 2 plan. We'll make the same decision again for any additional options we wish to create. At any point, we can start working on a layout. If we were able to anticipate the views necessary for the final project, we could have saved some of those cameras in the base plan to be copied forward with each option. This would guarantee all options have the same camera views, elevations, sections, etc. One way for handling a remodel project is similar to the options approach, starting with a base plan. In this scenario, we'll call it the as-built plan. Once the as-built is fleshed out, we'll choose Make a Copy. This will create a copy of the plan without making copies of any linked files. The Make Copy process will copy the file in the currently modified state, even if we haven't clicked the Save button yet. It will also put the new copy right next to the as-built plan. We'll rename this copy to Remodel. If necessary, we can create a folder to organize files like site pictures that we want to reference. We could even move the as-built plan into this folder at any time, and it would not break any link to the remodel plan or the layout. We make a copy of the as-built plan to create the remodel plan so that we can keep the as-built plan pristine. This way we can refer back to it as changes are made to the remodel without fear that an existing wall was accidentally moved. Additionally, with the pristine as-built, we can overlay the as-built and remodel plans, and we can see where the existing walls are and if any got erroneously moved in the model. We can also show off how new structural elements affect the as-built environment, what is being added, and what needs to be demoed. While using project management, everything is contained within the Chief Architect Manage Store, but sometimes we want to be able to take a project out of the Chief Architect system. For example, we may want to send a file to another user. We can right-click on the project in the project browser and choose the option to export. We can then choose which files in the project are exported, and the export process will bundle up the chosen project files, including any linked assets. This process creates a CA proj file that will be saved to your computer in a location of your choosing. Double-clicking on a CA proj file while using Chief Architect File Management will automatically import the project into your managed store. If we send a .ca proj file to a Chief Architect user who is not using project management, Chief Architect will prompt for a location to unpack the project file onto their computer, and that user will see the plan, layout, and materials as they would expect to see them. If we right-click on a file in the project browser and choose the option to delete, we'll be warned that the delete action is permanent, which means there is no undo. This message suggests that you should export the project before you delete it, and provides a convenient option to do so right in the message. If you accidentally delete a project, you will need to recover the plan and the layout files from the archives, which are still located in your Documents folder. If we right-click on an individual file, and not the project itself, 
we have an option to export disconnected plan or layout. This allows us to export the plan file without any of its references, just like if you were to grab a plan file from X16. This is useful if you want to share the file with another, but are not worried about the external file references or custom materials. Like if you are sending the file to technical support for troubleshooting the model, or sharing the file with someone who you know already has the necessary materials and you want to keep the file size down. As you work, Chief Architect creates an autosave file, and that file updates every five minutes. This is an automatic function that gives us a bit of a safety net if the program shuts down or power is lost unexpectedly. We don't need to think about it, it just happens. Autosave files can be found in your archives folder. We have another safety net in the form of Auto Archive. When you work on a plan or a layout and you click on the Save button, it saves the original and it also saves a copy to your archives folder. That archive copy is updated each time you save, and is set out of the box to create a new archive file each day you work on the project so that you have a daily archive. The autosave and the auto archive behaviors have not changed from X16. However, we have added another layer in X17, backups. When you're using Chief Architect Project Management, you can choose to have Chief Architect backup your entire managed store. When we initiate the backup, Chief Architect will grab your project files, preferences, templates, toolbars, hotkeys, user catalog, and assets like materials, PDFs, images, and other files you've imported into the managed system, and will bundle them all into a single zip file. In preferences, you can choose the location where your backup saved to, the frequency of the backup, and how many backups to keep on disk. It takes some time to create the backup, depending on what you have stored, and you'll not be able to use the program while the backup is taking place, so it is best to perform the backup when you are finished working at the end of the day. If you have a third-party backup service making backups of specific file locations, setting that service to backup this location would be an excellent step to take. It would add an extra layer of redundancy in case of a hard drive failure. If you want to move your Chief Architect environment to a new computer, you can do so by using one of the backup files, or we can trigger a backup manually by clicking File, Backup and Restore, Backup Managed Resources. Save the resulting zip file to a USB drive or other external media, and transfer it to a new computer. On the new computer, open Chief Architect and click File, Backup and Restore, Restore from Backup, and browse to where you had saved the backup from the previous computer. This process bundles everything up and unpacks it directly where it needs to go without you having to go through your user settings manually. Chief Architect Project Management adds a lot of safeguards to prevent file loss due to accidental movement, deletion, or renaming of linked resources. But like all things, there are trade-offs. More safeguards equals less flexibility. For example, custom text macros that includes file location will not function when Chief Architect Project Management is enabled. If you already have a file management strategy that works for you, it is perfectly fine to continue using it. Traditional file management is not going away. However, here are some reasons that you might want to use Chief Architect Project Management. Chief Architect will maintain the links between your resources, like plans, layouts, and materials, so that they will not be accidentally broken. You can see and browse to any project within the project browser itself without navigating through the file system. With the use of folders, you can create custom filters for your projects so that you can find what you need quickly. And you can bundle up all of your user settings and projects to transfer everything to a new computer in one go. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're as excited by these new features as we are.